Hey friends! Yeah, I almost forgot to start. Um, I was just sitting here having some time to myself and uh, I almost forgot to get things started here and it's almost seven o'clock. <laughs> so sorry about that. I was just a little bit not paying any attention apparently. My mind was drifting off into wherever lands. So, hey, it's good to have y'all coming on tonight. Um, I hope the weather has been good where you are. I know it's hot and uh, we've all had, I hope, some rain and so it might be a little more humid than uh, maybe we even want, but I guess that's called for, a, it's summer. No matter where we live, it's called summer. Well, it is 7 o'clock. We didn't have a lot of extra waiting time today. And so um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. We'll start with prayer and then we'll move forward and see what Yosef is up to. I got so excited about this today as I was working through it. So hang on and hang with me because it's going to, I think it's going to get a little exciting for us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for today, for being able to pause and to come to you, to be able to say, hello, we are here, and we are eager to learn tonight about, maybe about us, a little bit more. So God, just be with us, and let us have our hearts and our minds open. In your name we pray, amen. Well, we are starting chapter 39. I am so excited, and I, and I am, because there's something here that I think is really kind of fascinating. I need you, as we start, this is where part of the fun today for me started. If we, if we remember back before chapter 38, which hasn't been that far. If we look at verse chapter 37, verse 36, I find this part interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that was my word. And so in chapter 37, verse 36, meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him into Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's court official, chief of the palace guard. Well, now, what's interesting is we go to chapter 39, verse 1. Now, when Yosef was brought down to Egypt by the Ishmaelites, okay, he would have been brought by the Ishmaelites, Potiphar, an official of Pharaoh and chief of the guard, an Egyptian man, acquired him. Do you, does that sound familiar? Well, it should. Because really... Chapter 38, and, and I think we talked about that a little bit, is kind of an interlude. It really is the interlude for us. And, the, and, and, it's, and it's just about Judah. And so it is the interlude that needs to have Judah um, introduced. But it, it wouldn't have to be there, really. 37 goes to 39, almost word to word. Now, the other thing I found interesting is about Potiphar. Okay, Potiphar is really the pot part, the first part, the P-O-T, or P-H-U-T, depending on how your Bible references it. It means the son of. So, this is the son of one with, with that name, with far. So, he is the son of Far, Potiphar is. It was very common in Egypt to do that. And I and I was thinking about that, that in um, many uh, Scandinavian countries, we get a lot of sons of. Eric, um, some of the Ericsons or the Swansons, even the sons of, of become part of that Johnson. In fact, um, for us, the Johnson was changed from Johnston, because my however many greats back was the son of John. And so Johnson became the son of 
And, and so there, we had some of that happening. What well, happened in the Egyptian world too? So the pot, the P-O-T or the, like I said, the P-H-U-T, is really means the son of, like, ifer or far. I'm not sure which way it would be. But I found that kind of interesting to think about. But he was an official of Pharaoh. We know that. And a chief of the guard. He was an Egyptian man. And he acquired him from the hand of the Ishmaelites who brought him down there. He would have, we know that Joseph, Joseph would have been sold um, for a good price in the beginning. And now we don't know how much he was now being sold for. There is a little bit of exchanging of money. We're not sure who all, how much, or anything else would have been. He would have been a young boy, though. Um, and now he was a servant, and he was going to be gaining much. Now, I also find it interesting. There are two strands of the plot here that are going to be woven together into a couple of patterns. <clears throat> success, authority, imprisonment, and success and authority. Okay? And we're going to see that as we come through chapter 39. The other one is, that mirrors the larger story, though, is the favorite son, slavery, and the viscery of Egypt. Okay, so we have some parallel kind of patterns that we're seeing played out over and over again, and, and we're seeing it here as well. I want you to watch for the word hand and hands and how important it, it occurs four times as we are moving, and it did as we were ending chapter 38 as well. But we're going to see, and, we, and we're going to hear about Yosef's success six times throughout the story as well. So there's a connection between the word hand, or hands, as we move. And here's the first time. He was acquired, the Egyptian man acquired him from the hand of the Ishmaelites who brought him down there. Okay, so it's the first time we see hands, or hand, becoming important already. You know, what we need to remember, too, is that God blessed Yosef. Even though he had been sold into slavery in, ver in chapter um, 37, in verse 28, he is now going to be accused of sexual harassment in chapter 39, in verses 13 to 18. And you'd have thought that he would have lost maybe some of that divine authority or divine presence. And yet, we know that Yosef's life um, and God's purpose for his people, Israel, was never diminished. He never was diminished in that. And so I think it's important for us to remember that, that through the trials that Yosef has, just as it has been for all the other characters that have come through, that we have come through in Genesis God's divinity and God's plan is still present, and it's an amazing plan. You know what? It's the same plan, just like he has for you and me. And our, and our life is that story. And how we live it out is what we have to tell. How do we intersect with God? Well, let's watch as Yosef, as Yosef is intersecting here. Okay, in verse 2. But Yahweh was with Yosef. So we know that he was, Yahweh never left him. So that he became a man of success. Well, I think that this is really, in verses 2 to 4, really linked together, talking about his authority and his trust that he had gained. He was a steward of a huge estate. Yosef also had learned Egyptian. He learned, and he was a bilingual, imagine that. If we can say that from back in that time frame, then he would have been. Like many, 
they would have learned their language and the cultural language of the land they lived in. And so he was a bilingual. So, verse 2, the last part of it, while he was in the house of his lord, the Egyptian. Okay, so he gained much success. So we know that God had blessed him while he was in Potter, while he was serving in uh, Potiphar's house. Whatever circumstances we find God's people in, he will bless them. And he blesses you and me, no matter the circumstances we are found in. Even when we mess up, even when we are not perfect. Oh, wait a minute. We can't be perfect anyway. But because we're not, guess what? This is the exciting part. And I think for you and me, it is the part of the story to always keep in mind. Okay, verse 3. His his Lord saw that Yahweh was with him. Ooh, here, here's another one of those. I want you to kind of keep track of the, like, okay, we'll come back. I'll, I, this is where I got really crazy with my markers, and I was having a good time this morning because I got so excited about this. Okay, so the Lord saw that Yahweh was with him. See, his master saw that he was faithful, that he was... uh he was genuine. He had a lot of ingenuity. He was very bright. He was a willing servant. He was willing to go out of his way to do what needed to be done. Okay, so that whatever he did, whatever he did, Yahweh made succeed in a success in his hands. There's that hands again. See, the master knew that there was a supreme being. So Potiphar knew there had to have been a supreme being. He may not have worshipped God. He didn't. But he knew there was a supreme being. Now, if we jump a little bit to 3914, and I only do this because there is an interesting interlude here that we're going to we'll bring attention to it again. Because in verse 14, the last part of it, he was brought to us a Hebrew man to play, or play with us. Okay, so it is very clear that Potiphar already knew that he was Hebrew. He already knew it. That wasn't a concern for him, though. And maybe that's why Potiphar wasn't concerned. is because he, he showed his colors, he knew, they knew they could trust him. He was trustworthy, kind, loyal. I feel like I'm giving the Boy Scout standards of life, but maybe it's all of our standards of life to be courteous, kind, trustworthy, loyal, respectful, reverent. All of those things, Yosef was, and Potiphar knew it. Okay, so here we have hands again. Okay, it's important for us to think about that. Okay, verse 4. Yosef found favor. We're going to come back to found favor as well. In his eyes. Oh, eyes are also a link to authority. Okay, it is about authority. And eyes is about that authority that comes Okay, and he waited upon him. Yosef waited upon Potiphar willingly. He wasn't he wasn't enslaved as far as being un, unkind. Potiphar was not being unkind. He willingly, with an open heart, did what he needed to do. It's just what it was at the moment. He appointed him. Okay, this is Potiphar appointed him over his house and everything belonging to him. He placed in his hands. He had become the head servant. He was trusted. The head servant of everything. Of everything he owned. Ah, verse 5. And it was. And that's important too. The and it was is is repeated 12 times. 
And it's a very stylistic pattern that happens. And it was. And uh, now it is. So it was. It always brings us back to remember. Okay, so. And it was. And I think that's kind of what our voice has to do. And it was from when he had pointed him over his house and everything that belonged to him. Now, we're not sure how long this had been, okay? How long this had been um, that Yahweh blessed the Egyptian's house because of Yosef. Yahweh's blessing, again, we're going to come back to that, was upon everything that belonged to him in the house and in the fields, See, in a sense, that Yahweh's blessings in verse 5 is really a fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant, um, even before Israel was formed as a land. The covenant was already being fulfilled at this point. But see, everything that Yosef dealt with was being blessed. Yahweh was caring for his servant. This was a young lad. This was not an old man. This is a young lad. This is a young boy. Okay. What I want you to think about, and, and that, that God's oversight was really present, and this is where, you know, if you're taking notes or you're making marks, you're, we're going to do a little jumping because we've already had five verses, and there's some things that there is no injustice. Okay. And this is about God's oversight, that there is no injustice. Okay. With Yosef. In verse 3, okay, because Yahweh was with him. And we find that again in verse 21, which we're not going to get to tonight, obviously. In verse 21, Yahweh was with Yosef. So we get that re repetition that there was no injustice being done. That he had found favor in verse 4. Yosef found favor in his eyes. And again in verse 21, there was kindness extended and his fate, and he put favor in his eyes. Okay? That's when he's in prison though. Okay? And we'll get to that when we get there. There was mercy given and that's the extended kindness in verse 21. Do you see how the theme up oh, the prosper Yosef was prosper. So in verse 3, because Yahweh was with him. And in verse 23, because Yahweh was with him. And he was blessed in verse 5. How can we ever doubt who this God is? Injustice. Well, no. There may be some things that don't seem fair. But God's oversight was present with young Yosef as he was starting this journey. This piece of the puzzle, this part of the story, you know, this is part of what is happening. There's a rise and fall of Yosef. And right now it's rising. He is on the good side of Potiphar. Everything is going well. He is, he is a lead. He has been trusted. He will continue to be trusted. And now, verse 6. So he left everything <clears throat> that was his in Yosef's hands. Okay, there's that word again. Hands. Sorry about that. I felt the tickle coming. Not concerning himself about anything with him there. Except for the bread he ate. So Potiphar was only concerned about what he was going to eat. He really did turn everything over. Yosef was proving to be very loyal, very honest. There were so many blessings that he didn't have to do anything because Yosef was a man of character. He was trusted. His goodness shined out that he was handed over things to care for. Now, Yosef was fair of form and fair to look at in other words, he was a young man. In fact, I think I was trying to piece together a timeline a little bit. Yosef was 17 years old 
when he would have been sold by his brothers. So he was a young boy, a young man. I'm not going to say a boy. He was a young man. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. He was probably in, Pot in Potiphar's house. Well, you've got what? You've got about 13 years in there. He was probably in Potiphar's house more than he was in prison. At least there is, by what I could piece together, he had to have been longer in the house than in prison. It, or it could have been, maybe it was more equal. But any, anyway, there's that, there is about 17 years, or um, no, no, 13 years, I'm sorry. 13 years in there that have to be accounted for. So how we divide that 13, I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can come up. I can't find anything that says exactly how many years he was in Potiphar's house and how many years he would have been in prison. But we know there's 13 years there, give or take a little bit. So he would have been a very attractive young man, probably. Um, very, um, at the right age, maybe. Okay. Okay. Now, now here's where the problem starts to arise in verse 7. Verse 7 starts to give us some problems and sheds a new, a new light, maybe, a little bit on, on Yosef's story. Oh, it does. It changes it a lot for us. Now, after these events, mm -hmm. okay, he'd been around. He had been he was trusted. Potiphar probably left the um, house often to go to meetings or to town, maybe to go have coffee with his buddies, maybe to go out and check the fields or the um, work or the, the herds. He would have been not in the house, okay? He would have had a large contingency of people to deal with. Um, we know that Yosef took care of all the details of all the, that kind of thing. He may have been doing more social kind of things. We don't know. Anyway, so verse 7. Now, after these events, it was that the Lord's wife fixed her eyes. Uh-oh. There's that word again, eyes, upon Yosef. Oh. She is really bored. She's very spoiled and pampered. This is a woman that has probably gotten all she ever wanted at all times. Never having to wait. Never having to lift a finger. Snap her fingers and she was waited on. The eunuchs would have been there immediately to bring her whatever she wanted. This is not a woman who waited. And she says, lie with me. <laughs> uh, some might have given in. She really did want to seduce him. But that would have been adultery. Yosef is Hebrew. He's Jewish. This would not, and it would not have, even in Egyptian law, have been considered appropriate. This was a problem. But this is a woman who was after something. And we know what. Verse 8. But he refused. He refused. He knew he could not sin against this God of creation. He knew that he could not break the trust with Potiphar. He knew that this was evil. And he didn't want any part of it. He did not want to sin against God. He knew what would happen if, that, if he did. But he said to his Lord's wife, Look, my Lord need not concern himself with anything in the house with me here. And that's really talking about the goods and the money. 
the running of the house, that was all up to Yosef to take care of. And everything that belongs to him, he has placed in my hands. Oh. His hands. It's the trust. It was the weight of it. Things have been put in his hands. Think about that. What's that image mean? To Yosef, it was a big deal. He took that seriously. See, had he acted on the lust, it would have been ungratitude for the favor that had been given him, and he had been given so much. And he knew that Yahweh was there too and was protecting him. And he didn't want to go against the covenants, the covenants he knew and the sin of what adultery would be. In verse 9, He is no greater in this house than I and, what, and has withheld nothing from me except for yourself, since you are his wife. He respected the boundaries. He respected the man. He respected her, even though she didn't see it that way. So how can I do this great ill? I would be sinning against God. It would be a gross violation of all ethics. It would be lack of respect for Potiphar and for his life of holiness before God. He tried. He tried to say no. Well, he does say no. We know that. Verse 10. Oh, this is another one of those. Now it was. I think this is. And it was. Now it was. It is that literary. I'm going to get your. I want to raise the attention a little bit. And she would speak to Yosef day after day that he would not hearken to her, to lie beside her, to be with her. She tried to wear him down. She tried over and over to wear him down. His grace and his spiritual strength resisted. And he would not give in. He kept saying no. Verse 11. Oh, and so it was. Another one of the literary, I'm going to make a point. So it was on such a day. This was probably a year or so down the road from when she started. She tried for a long time to convince him. And he kept denying. So, uh, when he came into the house to do his work, and none of the house people were there in the house, whoops. See, there would have been a festival going on about this time, and this is why we think that this is when this was. And it would have been a festival for women. My guess is, if I could read a little bit into is that we're talking about some fertility, uh, some fertility um, gods, idling, worshiping, that kind of thing is going on. Very, very sexual, very um, intimate. Uh, yeah, all of that. You get it. I. That's the festival that would have been going on. That's why we think it was about a year, and it makes sense because if there was no one in the house, there, this would have been a festival that women would have been. Um, Yeah, okay, y'all catch it, right? Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, this would have been a festival that, uh, for the women, it would have been very sexual. Well, for the men, too. That's why there was no one at the house when Yosef went. Now, I have to say, oh, except for her, except for her, verse 12, that she grabbed him by his garment. Oh, can you see it? Saying, lie with me. 
but he left his garment in her hand. Oh, there's that hand again. And he fled, escaping outside. Now, I find it interesting. There's two things that I find interesting. Um, one, he, left, he fled for his honor, obviously. This is, this is one reason that I am so definitive about that I will not um, meet, especially with men, I will not go one-to-one -one or one-on-one -on -one in, in someone's house. Um, if I need to meet with a man, I will either take someone with me or we will meet at McDonald's or someplace else. It is, it is why we go two by two. It is to protect the reputation of the other. Because here's exactly why reputations can be heard, is exactly what she has now done. Of course, I have another question. And why he didn't take his garment with him. But I'm not even going to speculate. I, I can ask that question maybe next week. Because... Y'all know we're right in the middle of something really good and we need to stop. I know it's so hard. You know, I, and I, I'm going to write, use this in my, from the pastor this week, but I read this and I think I read it on Facebook and I really like it. And I, and I had to pause. We don't begin or end our prayers. Our words simply leap for a few moments into the ongoing conversation between Jesus and the Spirit within us. Our prayers, we really never stop praying. So as I sat here today, marveling at what this word, the word was opening up to me and what it was telling me today, and then I read that, it was like, that's true. 24-7, we are gods. Yosef was gods 24-7. What do we do with that time? My friends, go in peace today. Let our prayers continue from day in to day out, 24-7. Let us be guided by the one who gives life. Let you and I have a, have our, may our days be valuable to him and to all those who are with us. Go in peace, my friends. My blessings are with you. Amen.